Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless let's talk about this Louisville isd teacher who's on administrative leave this is after a video of him wearing a pink dress on campus draw a lot of crit or drew a lot of criticism but as our andrea lucia tells us students right now are organizing an effort to get him back bring mr t back mr t is just a cool dude he did not deserve this Students at Hebron High have started a petition calling for the return of a chemistry teacher. Hi, um, my name is Rahma Chahiyadi. Chahiyadi, or Mr. T, as students know him, has been teaching in North Texas for 22 years, but became a recent target of online attacks after video began circulating of him wearing a pink dress on campus. <laughs> According to a petition, the video was taken on a spirit day when students and staff dress according to different themes, and many students in his class encouraged him to wear the dress. The situation became heated after a controversial right-wing social media account posted the video and called on Louisville ISD superintendent to explain why the dress was allowed. The district confirms it placed Jacquiati on administrative leave while it reviews the situation, telling parents in a letter that it's standard procedure. The Dallas Asian American Historical Society released a statement of solidarity with Jacquiati, calling the district's actions discriminatory, while Governor Abbott used the occasion to advocate for supporters of school vouchers, posting online that no parent should be forced by the state to send their student to this school. He doesn't bring that into his teaching. He doesn't enforce that upon anybody. He's actually the leading chemistry teacher at our school, and he should not be fired. Students, meanwhile, have continued sharing messages of support, calling Jacquiati an amazing teacher, an incredible person. Deuteronomy 22.5 A woman shall not wear anything that pertains to a man, nor shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all who do so are an abomination to the Lord your God. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Now to the war between Israel and Hamas. The White House says a tentative agreement has been reached on the framework for a temporary ceasefire. Ceasefire negotiations continuing this week while Israel pushes ahead with its plan to launch a military operation against Hamas in that densely populated area of Rafah in southern Gaza. The Israeli war cabinet this morning considering a proposal to try and move civilians out of that area where more than a million people are now living. Aid agencies warning of a potential catastrophe if the Israeli military moves in. But over the weekend, Prime Minister Netanyahu saying a military operation there could be delayed if a new ceasefire deal can be reached with Hamas. An Israeli source telling ABC News that Israel has now agreed to an updated framework, and that would see a six-week ceasefire and the potential release of 40 hostages. We're talking about the elderly, injured and sick, but probably not any Israeli soldiers being held by Hamas. In return, Israel would release hundreds of Palestinian prisoners. The IDF would redeploy, but not withdraw its forces from the Gaza Strip. And while Hamas considers that proposal, White House National Security Security advisor Jake Sullivan warning Sunday that a major Israeli military operation in Rafah should not proceed unless there is a clear and executable plan to protect civilians, something U.S. officials say they have not yet seen. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is vowing to complete his mission to defeat Hamas regardless of ceasefire talks. In Tel Aviv, Israelis protesting against Netanyahu's handling of the war were dispersed, you see it there, by a police water cannon over the weekend. Now, all this comes as Palestinians in the Gaza city of Rafah 
brace for a possible ground assault by the Israeli army. In the ruins of Gaza City, stalked by hunger and fear, some have reached breaking point. I wish my children were dead so they couldn't ask me for bread. I cannot feed my own children, shouts this man. But on Face the Nation yesterday, Israel's Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, said he's determined to launch an offensive in Rafah in southern Gaza, where around one and a half million Palestinians are now sheltering. We can't leave a quarter of Hamas uh, battalions in uh, Rafah and say, mm -hmm. well, that's, that's fine. Total victory is our goal and total victory is within reach, not months away, weeks away, once we begin the operation. In the last days, the prophet Zechariah tells us Israel will be the focal point of world conflict and he gives a dire warning to the nations who would dare come against Jerusalem. Zechariah 12, 2 and 3 Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. This prophecy is unfolding right before our very eyes. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's post-war plans for the territory, including open-ended control over military and civilian affairs, come under harsh scrutiny. And now Netanyahu's facing fresh criticism from the U.S. over new plans for the West Bank. CBS's Holly Williams has the latest from Tel Aviv. Kirbet Zanuta is a small Palestinian village in the West Bank, now lying in ruins. They demolished the school, they demolished most of the houses. It was bulldozed last year after Israeli settlers harassed the residents until they fled. A delegation of American lawmakers was given a tour of what's left of Kirbet Zanuta this past week by Israeli activists who campaign against the occupation of Palestinian territory. Basically coming here, taking settler sheep, beating up Palestinian shepherds and kicking out the Palestinians off their land. And they're protected by the by, military. By the military. Full protection, everything, of course. Around half a million Israeli settlers live in the West Bank on occupied territory. The settlements are widely regarded as illegal under international law, but there are now several prominent settlers in Israel's cabinet. There's been an uptick in violent clashes in the West Bank since the October 7th attack on Israel, some of them deadly. A Palestinian community leader asked the American representatives for their help, including Congresswoman Rosa DeLauro of Connecticut. People just cannot be uprooted from their life, from their families, and, and no one cares about them. The U.S. has long supported a two-state solution, giving the Palestinians their own state in the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. But after decades of thwarted negotiations, there are reports the Biden administration is considering a radical change, simply recognizing a Palestinian state after the war is over. God gives the most dire warning to the nations who would divide up his land, as we read in Joel 3, 1 and 2. For behold, in those days and at that time, when I bring back the captives of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will enter into judgment with them there on account of my people, my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations. They have also divided up my land. And the only way this conflict is ever going to stop is with outside help, and the United States can be the adult in the room. The tour was organized by J Street, a primarily Jewish American lobbying group that's urging President Biden to recognize a Palestinian state. So we need a bolder American policy. We need a bolder set of moves from President Biden. Do you think he's going to do it? I hope so. We may know within a matter of days or weeks. The U.S. carried out another round of strikes against Iran-backed rebels in Yemen, but there are new questions this morning about how effective they are. The U.S. is struggling to stop these relentless attacks by Iran-backed rebels, despite significant strikes against the group. Now, over the weekend, the U.S. and the U.K. launching yet another round of joint airstrikes, targeting 18 Houthi targets, including underground weapons facilities, radar, drones, and missiles. For months now, the Houthis have been 
been terrorizing commercial vessels in the Red Sea, claiming to retaliate for Israel's war in Gaza. It has been a costly disruption to one of the world's most critical shipping routes. Now, these latest strikes over the weekend are now the fourth round of joint strikes by the U.S. and the U.K., but so far the Houthis are showing no sign of stopping or slowing down. In fact, they're bound to escalate their campaign. A joint mission to disrupt and degrade. U.S. and British forces launched the latest round of airstrikes, focusing on Houthi targets throughout Yemen. They say around 18 targets across eight locations in Yemen were hit. That housed weapons, missiles, and air defense systems. In a statement, the Pentagon says, these strikes are in response to Houthis' continued attacks against commercial and naval vessels that have not only endangered international seafarers, but the lives of the Yemeni people. The statement goes on to say the Houthis have conducted more than 45 attacks on commercial and naval vessels since mid-November, and they constitute a threat to global economy, as well as regional security and stability, and demand an international response. Houthi forces have taken a strong stance against the attacks, saying they won't back down so long as the war in Gaza continues. The Yemeni armed forces, along with all the great Yemeni people, will continue to carry out their religious, moral and humanitarian duties towards the Palestinian people. And their military operations will not stop unless the aggression stops and the siege on the Palestinian people in the Gaza Strip is lifted. The Yemeni armed forces confirm that they'll confront the American-British escalation with more military operations against all hostile targets in the Red and Arab Seas to defend our country, our people and our nation. Targeted attacks in the Red Sea by Houthi rebels have disrupted global trade on a mass scale. Anything from the fashion industry to the auto trade has been impacted. But as the Houthis, the UK and the US continue their military confrontations, escalation is becoming a real threat, with diplomacy being pushed further away, and the war in Gaza expanding beyond its fragile borders. These were the deepest strikes inside Lebanese territory since Hezbollah and Israel went to war in October. Baalbek is some 70 kilometers from the capital, Beirut kilometers from the border where there have been near daily exchange of fire since the armed group opened a front to help relieve pressure on Gaza. <laughs> Lebanese security sources say the targets were a warehouse and a farm in a known Hezbollah stronghold. Some of the group's fighters were reportedly killed. Israel said it hit targets belonging to the armed group's air defense unit in retaliation for the downing of one of its drones in southern Lebanon. Zechariah goes on to tell us that God will use the Israeli Defense Forces to destroy the Muslim nations that seek their destruction. In that day I will make the governors of Judah like a firepan in the woodpile and like a fiery torch in the sheaves. They shall devour all the surrounding peoples on the right hand and on the left. But Jerusalem shall be inhabited again in her own place. Jerusalem. Early on Monday, video circulating online showed a drone falling from the sky after being hit by what Hezbollah said was a surface-to-air missile. Israel media called it a dangerous development. Yes, it is sending a message to Israel. What I'm worried about is that we are going to see an intensification of these bombing campaigns by Israel over the next period until some sort of a deal is reached in Gaza. Not long after the Baalbek strikes, Israeli drones returned to the skies. At least two were killed when their car was hit in southern Lebanon in the latest targeted killing. The latest escalation came a day after Israel's defense minister, Yoav Gallant, vowed to step up attacks on Lebanon, even if a ceasefire is agreed in Gaza. But it wasn't the first time he said that. And Hezbollah has already threatened to escalate attacks if Israel continues to strike Lebanon after any agreement is reached with the Palestinian movement. Hamas. The situation is gradually escalating and the arena of confrontation is expanding. Those close to Hezbollah say this is still a calculated escalation, at least for now. As we continue to watch the Muslim world unite against Israel, the Bible tells us there are four possible prophecies on the verge of finding fulfillment. Isaiah 17.1, in which Damascus, Syria will be destroyed in a single night. Jeremiah 49, the prophecy of Alam, which could infer an Israeli attack upon Iran's nuclear program. Psalm 83, in which the Muslim nations that border Israel will mount an attack on Israel in order to cut them off from being a nation. 
Ezekiel 38 and 39, known as the War of Gog and Magog. In this prophecy, a coalition of nations led by Russia, Iran, and Turkey will attack Israel in the last days in order to take Israel's wealth. As a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Jesus declares, And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet, for a nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Turning to the war in Ukraine, the country's president, Volodymyr Zelensky, is out with a dire new warning saying millions of Ukrainians could die if his country doesn't get more USA. As Charlie Daggett reports, the Ukrainian military is feeling the pressure. An historic train station, a church, and nearby homes in flames from Russian missile strikes in eastern Ukraine. Nothing new except for Ksenia's parents who lost everything. I was asleep. Lightning lit up the whole room, she said. My parents are now homeless. We'll have to figure out what to do now. President Zelensky said Ukrainians are dying by the day because of a lack of Western support, revealing for the first time the figure of 31,000 Ukrainian soldiers killed since the invasion began though even U.S. analysts put the number at more than twice that. And while Congress wrestles over that $60 billion Ukraine funding package, Russian forces have gone on the attack at several points along the front line after capturing the city of Avdivka. In a stark warning, Zelensky said Congress knows that Ukraine needs that aid package within a month to spare more lives, civilians and soldiers alike. President Zelensky completely shot down any idea of direct negotiations with Russian President Vladimir Putin, saying we'll only offer him a platform where he can agree that he has lost this war and it was a mistake. Jesus, speaking to his disciples about the signs of his coming and the end of the age, declares this in Matthew 24, 12. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. The Bible tells us lawlessness is the violation of God's commandments as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Sin will be so rampant and so commonplace in the last days that the love people once had for one another, for many, will be non-existent. In this prophecy, Jesus Christ is describing an ongoing breakdown in the relationship with God. And since people's love for God is waning, it will be evident in the way people treat one another as well. A symptom may be that the love toward other people is decreasing, but the real cause is that the relationship with God is cooling off. This is what we are witnessing in our world today. This morning, tributes are growing for Lake and Riley, a 22-year-old nursing student murdered while jogging by this lake at the University of Georgia. The 26-year-old suspect, Jose Antonio Ibarra, a non-U.S. citizen from Venezuela, now charged with her murder. Police say they had no prior relationship. This was a crime of opportunity. Immigration officials say Ibarra was previously arrested when he illegally entered the U.S. in 2022. A year later, he was arrested in New York City for acting in a manner to injure a child less than 17. He was released both times. And just days after the UGA attack, tragedy striking another college campus. Kentucky's Campbellsville University sent into lockdown Saturday after 18-year-old student Josiah Kilman was found dead inside of his dorm room. Another student at the school, 21-year-old Charles Escalera, now charged with murder. Both had been members of the school's wrestling team. Kilman's family writing in a statement, Josiah influenced many hearts as he was a true example of compassion, kindness, and love. As yet another college campus is shaken, students are taking action. Some keeping pepper spray at the ready for the first time. Got this from my dad. I've had it for a while, but I've honestly never felt the need to carry it until now. A UGA student petition with roughly 25,000 signatures is also asking the school to reinstall blue emergency call boxes that were removed 20 years ago and replaced by a safety app. Being able to just see the light itself, not having to reach into your pocket and pull out your phone and put in your password and there's a lot more steps. As UGA's first day back to class begins, so does the process of keeping Lake and Riley's memory alive. She lit up every single room that she walked into. Bianca Tiller and Riley were freshman roommates. Tiller says Riley loved to help people. She was pursuing a career in something that came naturally. She was just the most selfless person. The Apostle Paul in his epistle to Timothy tells us in the last days society will be in a total immoral meltdown. 2 Timothy 3, 1-5 But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. 
for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. Sheriff told us about a man who he said wanted to eat a child, yes, eat her, as in cannibalism. And that was just one of the shocking details we heard at that press conference this morning. A knock on the door. What's up, man? What's up, what's up? Met by guys in green. 45 people arrested for being child predators, prostitutes, johns, human traffickers, and this. A gentleman wanted a person brought to him that he could eat, physically cannibalize. That was Justin Vincent, who also, according to this warrant, planned to kidnap a child and make her drink her own pee to get him off. You want to talk about the depravity of humanity? Look at these people. People like Assam Batros. He took an erectile dysfunction pill before he got there. And then he injected himself with testosterone into his genitals. All while thinking he was meeting a 14-year-old, like many of the people who knocked at this door. During the course of the investigation, a lot of people admitted that they knowingly had sexually transmitted diseases. And they were willing to have sex with a 14-year-old. Romans 1 28 through 32. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. There can be no doubt we are living in the end times right before Jesus Christ returns as we link 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5 with Romans 1, 28 through 32. John 15, 18 through 20. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. The Metropolitan Police has been filmed threatening to arrest yet another Christian preacher over so-called hate crime complaints. Let's take a look now. This unfolded in West London last weekend. We need to have structure, otherwise that you you're speaking, you're speaking, you're speaking at the same time. Well, right now okay. you're speaking over her. Right, right. So okay. I'm saying, is she speaking okay. or are you speaking? Yes, you do. We both so speaking. There is an element of... Obama we can walk away, we can walk away. Let's let the people change. Okay. 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 But as long as you're not, you're not preaching over so the, so the megaphone... So you just mentioned, you just said just now. Sir, for yourselves, believers, for example, that does not fit under the public space protection order, even under the religious category for being able for freedom of speech. Obviously, a crime has been committed. We need to investigate. Okay. Or do you want a hundred pound fine? Okay. Because if you don't want that, we could deal with it in custody. I'm not trying to be rude. I just want to ask one I question. I think you are, sir, trying okay. to be rude. Okay. I want to ask the question. Thank you. Thank you, officer. Can I ask you the question? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not asking you the question. I'm asking you. Okay. Uh, okay, but you're aware that I can find you for no, that. I'm just asking you the question. One second. One second. You one, second. Who you are. one second. If you do not, I will one arrest second. you for public one second. protection one or second. the breach. One second. Do you have one identification second. on you? I know you're upset. One second. No, no. If you preach in here, it also depends on what you say. You might be committing criminal offences as well. If if you make a members of the public yeah. harassment, alarm, distress, yeah. it's a criminal offence. I'm aware of that. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what we're, we're not we're doing that. What we're doing is about preaching our religion. Okay, could you just tell me what you were saying? So we're saying Jesus is the only way to record this. We're saying, he asked me what I've been preaching. So we've been preaching about the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in the book of John, chapter 3, verse 16, that for God so loved the world, that he gave his one and only begotten son, that whosoever, that is any person, doesn't matter if they're black, white, homosexual, drunken, liar, thief, prostitute, whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. 
For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but he sent his son into the world that all can be saved. And that is the message of the gospel. That's what we've been preaching. Romans 10, 14 and 15. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. How many police officers were there? There was about five different police officers Unbelievable. There. Exactly. You're going about, you're a preacher, you've got an established church yes. in Uxbridge, in West London, you're preaching from the gospel. Five police officers. Five police officers uh, intimidated me and trying to stop me. Had they been called by somebody were they walking past so allegedly they said that a member of the public called them saying that i've been saying some homophobic behavior which is absolutely not the case and then when i questioned the police officer about this he was saying that he's not met the victim but he's heard that they said this so he wanted to um, demand my details and demand um, information from me but i begin to question him politely yeah. began to get more aggressive yeah. and threatened to arrest me and you were actually threatened with arrest and threatened that you they could keep you in a police cell overnight threatened with arrest and threatened with, to keep me in a police cell overnight yes correct how do you feel about that yeah i just feel that we as christians are given a mandate from our lord and savior jesus christ to go out into the world and to preach the gospel do you feel as a christian pastor increasingly that people are trying to marginalize or even persecute i feel there's a two-tier system so when it comes to Christians, like you said, they're trying to marginalise, they're trying to silence us. But when it comes to other groups, they're allowed to express their mm. religion loud and clear. But when a Christian comes on the street and begins to present the gospel, there's a problem. I say the football fans are not ashamed to lift up their football teams. The, the homosexuals are not ashamed to go on marches. Different groups are not ashamed to march on London Bridge and, and shout and scream. But when the Christian comes on the street and presents the gospel, then the police come in like a flood, five of them, mm -hmm. and try to silence us. The Christian persecution the church is suffering right now, awful as it is, will only get worse. The Bible tells us in the last days, right before Jesus returns, the greatest political leader in the history of mankind will take the world stage. He will launch a military campaign that will result in his acquiring authority over all peoples of the earth as we read in Revelation 13, 7 and 8. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. All who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. His empire will be the most extensive in all of history, encompassing the entire world, and his rule will be the most demonic the world has ever experienced. He will appear to be the savior of the world, but as he consolidates his power, his true nature will be revealed. He will emerge as a Satan-possessed, an empowered person who hates God and is determined to annihilate Christianity. His method of eliminating Christians will be by beheading as we read in Revelation 24. And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. For this reason, he is identified in Scripture as the Antichrist, as we read in 1 John 2.18. Little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. 1 Corinthians 16.13 Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear, that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world, as we know it, is near. For God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned, and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, 
the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.